let's uh, look, move to the Northern Territory now. The leaders had that debate. It was really fiery at times, most notably over the issue of borders. Good stuff, wasn't it? I mean, uh, they, they all got in there, had, had a crack. It's interesting here, a lot of tests this Saturday night. Michael Gunner, bit of a one-trick pony on the borders. Is that enough? And, uh, you know, it's often said in politics, when you go to an election, you shouldn't campaign on what you've done. You should campaign on what you're going to do because you can suffer otherwise. Or is it a matter of the pandemic being so dominant, people so happy in the Northern Territory that there are border closures that he'll win and win easily? We'll find out Saturday night. Here's this stoush between him and Leah Finocchiaro, the opposition leader on it. When Canberra told us to open the borders back in June, we said no, you said yes. How can Territorians trust you to put them first to save their lives when you failed that fundamental leadership test and if you had opened those borders back in June, we would have seen community transmission of the virus here in Northern Territory? Uh, I think that that is an absolutely disgusting thing for a Chief Minister of a jurisdiction to say. How you can use your responsibility as a leader so to, give to, no, to give clear unequivocal messages to... You just asked me to, to take responsibility, take responsibility for your decision. You said June 22, take responsibility. You're obviously a bit sensitive about the answer because you know it's true. Well, you're dodging the answer, that's the uh, thing. Uh, uh, let's, let her, let's let her answer the question. Well, she's not, but good as she would uh, be. OK. Uh, Territorians have been relying on you to get all of their information on COVID. And dodging you the have again. engineered the system that Still way dodging because you want people hanging on your every word. Still dodging and the decision. And you have largely Still been can't responsible. Take responsibility. Okay, 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 but let her, let her answer the question. Uh, what you are now doing is rewriting history and using this as a political weapon because you are trying to save your own skin. A willing contest and you can bet that I'll be practising Finocchiaro all the way through to Saturday night, the pronunciation of that, <laughs> Kieran. Too. Yes, well, too. <laughs> OK, so uh, anyway, so I asked Scott Morrison about this, this, this sort of situation where uh, the state borders are going to remain shut for domestic political purposes, that he is going to get blamed for state premiers in in strongholds of his, really, in places like WA and Queensland for bucking against this and uh, what difficulty that poses. We know that Clive Palmer is in the High Court trying to end the border closures as well. That could solve the problem for Scott Morrison, although he's pulled out of joining that action or supporting it. Anyway, this is what he had to say. So he's saying it to his counterpart, right? He's saying if you open borders on June 22 like Canberra wanted you to, uh, you would have brought the virus in the top end. How do you react to that statement and the fact that in a number of state and territory elections now, uh, what the leaders are promising seems to indicate longer state border closures? I mean, the approach the Commonwealth has always taken is you contain where the outbreaks are. What uh, premiers want to do with their borders which are further removed from that, uh, they've made unilateral decisions on those, on those issues. What I continue to ask is when they do that, that they seek to work uh, with their neighbouring states, that they work with the Commonwealth and the communities that are impacted. What about the ele we, in the context of the election, though, and him weaponising you, in a sense, against the CLP on that? What do you think of that? I'm not interested in the politics of the pandemic. I'll leave that for others. He's not interested in the politics. He's just a politician. So let's have a look at the unemployment rate <laughs> of these states. This tells a story, and that's why I keep showing it, Kieran. I mean, look, you could say to me, Tasmania's borders shut and, and they're fine, so that's sort of the misnomer in there, but look at those high rates. The highest rates in July for the school holidays period, those areas that rely on tourism, rely on people coming from Sydney, for example, certainly Melbourne, although that, we know that can't happen at the moment. But South Australia, 8%. Northern Territory, 7.5%. WA, 8.3%. Queensland, 8.8%. That is... You've probably got a percent or two of border closures mixed into that, Kieran. And so yeah. how long are they going to keep this going? And don't forget, that's when they've got JobKeeper. That's when the federal government's putting $100 billion to keep people out of that unemployment rate. How bad is this going to get? Are we going to get a situation where they win the state and territory elections on border closures and then they have to open them six months later anyway? Is this kind of a false fight? Mm. And this is the danger for Michael Gunner and Anastasia Palaszczuk because you can see Leah Finocchiaro, got it, going with yeah, him in a bipartisan matter, uh, manner 
on the borders issue. So really, you could argue that cancels itself out. What about the other yeah. issues? We'll know. We'll know how effective mm. that campaign on the borders has been Saturday night, and it really will be a sign of how things are going to go in Queensland and WA, Kieran. Yeah, that small target strategy, just sticking to one issue. We'll see, Andrew. It's going to be an interesting night, Saturday night. Make sure you, you join us for that, our coverage from 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, 6 o'clock Central Australian Time, the NT election.